Howdy friends. I'm August. This is Cozy Rosie Reads and this is planning my September to be read pile. I'm currently filming at a time in the evening that I normally don't film in but I feel like this light is super soft and romantic and I decided to put on my beautiful little peasant dress that I loaned to my sister. And Zuzu, if you're seeing this, it is missing so many buttons now. We're not gonna look at them. Please do not look at my missing buttons. I love this dress so much. And to my surprise, I think four or five buttons are now missing. <laughs> to be fair, I think she told me that some buttons were missing, but I did not realize they would all be in the same area. So we have this little tie going on. Anyway, I hope you all are doing really well. Winston is here as well. He's just hanging out right here. And today we're gonna be planning my September TBR pile. Now, <laughs> have I actually read any of the books on my physical TBRs in the past two months. No! <laughs> Did I feel compelled to read the books that were on my physical TBRs in the past few months? No! Do I still want to film a TBR jar challenge video in hopes that it will inspire me to pick up my next read? Yes. Honestly, TBR piles have been so not helpful for me lately, and I've definitely been way more of like a mood reader the past two months specifically. All I want to do is find my next favorite book, even if it's not on a physical TBR pile. So we're just still gonna do it. We're still gonna pick 10 books to choose from to read in the month of September. But yeah, I think August as a month is really odd in itself because it's not quite giving me full summer energy like June and July where I wanna read light, fluffy, airy stuff. But it's also too early for me to be reading like academic, scholarly, fall, cozy, horror, spooky season books yet. You're very grumpy. Am I going to be able to film this video today? That with all the cars going by because it's such a nice day out. There's a lot of street traffic right now. <laughs> Maybe this was a bad idea to film this late in the evening, but I think we're just gonna roll with it and honestly who gives a hoot. So anyway, if you're new here, welcome. Every month I pick 10 prompts from my TBR challenge jar to help me narrow down my physical TBR for what books I'm gonna read in a month. It's very rare that I get to all 10 books. I deviate a lot. That's what I've been rambling about this first few minutes of this intro has honestly just been, I've been deviating a lot. I have not read hardly any books on my actual physical TBR for that month and that's fine. We're allowed to do that as humans. This is just a fun way for me to narrow down what I do want to read. So the month of September though, definitely want more classics. I want more literary fiction. I want academia. I want coziness. I want to start getting excited about fall and spooky season. And I recently picked up quite a few new books for myself that I don't know. I honestly have not felt compelled to film an entire book haul. So what I've been doing is when I go out and about, I'll just show the books I get in, like in a vlog. We'll see. Some of these books you might have seen in a vlog. Some of them you might not. Some of them you will see very soon. But yeah, I'm feeling very compelled to read a lot of the books that I picked up recently. So let's just go ahead and dive in. I hope you all are doing really well. First prompt of September is graphic novel. Oh, we know what we're going to pick for this one. It's a graphic novel. We are going to do book three, which is completely buried in here. <laughs> I need a new system of the Girl from the Other Side series by Nagabe. I have not finished reading this series. I reread book two and my book bingo video have not read number three yet. I'm so excited. This is definitely an easy peasy one I'm going to be reading in September. I honestly might try to like fly through the rest of the series, but I also want to savor it. I'm not sure. Um, through fall and winter of this year. This is like the coziest graphic novel you could ever imagine and I feel like it makes any season I read it in extra cozy. So this is an easy first pick. <laughs> okay, prompt number two. Ooh, we have the letter P as in Paul. I know I have Picture of Dorian Gray. Ooh, I actually have quite a few. Let me read them out to you. I have Passion and Affect by Lori Polin, a short story collection. I have People in the Trees by Hanya Nagahara, Peter Pan by J.M. Barry, Places No One Knows by Brenna Yovanoff, Pond, Claire Louise Bennett, A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man by James Joyce, Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter, Princess of Cleves by Madame de Lafayette, and I think that is it. Although I do have this very eclectic stack here of <laughs> very random books. These here, this chunk, are books that I bought very recently, so those do not have any peas in them. But the book that I'm gonna go with is P. 
Piranesi by Susanna Clark. I'm definitely feeling academic vibes. I've been wanting to read this for a while and it's not that I'm intimidated by this novel. It's more of I've heard so much about it and if you've been on this channel for a while you might know that this summer I've had quite a few vlogs where I've talked about how I have not really enjoyed reading books that I've heard a lot about. I would much prefer picking up a book I've never heard of and exploring it myself, having no preconceived notions or other people's voices or opinions about it. I think my expectations with this are really high because I have heard wonderful things. If you haven't heard of this book, it's very popular. It follows this creature man named Piranesi living in this building that has like endless space and corridors and it's just him like roaming around it until he finds another person in the house that he just calls the other. I have no idea what to expect but I feel like my expectations are really high because I've heard nothing but like rave reviews about this book but I have heard a few people were disappointed and I think that's because the expectations are so high and the standards are so high but I'm really curious I feel like this would be a really good early fall book to get cozy and introspective with. I do love surrealism and metaphors and abstract based on the premise and how like almost stark this environment is and how minimal uh the characters are like i think there really are only two characters in this entire book i think i might really enjoy it so it has all the elements and ingredients for a good book for me but we shall see so i'm gonna add piranesi okay prompt number three my friends we are nearing the end of this tbr jar as well Ooh, black cover I know what I'm gonna pick. That was really easy. I just like kind of turned around and it was right there. I'm actually gonna pick up Sin Eater by Megan Campisi. This is a, I love this cover so much. It's just so stunning. This is like a, it says, Handmaid's Tale meets Alice in Wonderland. It's a historical novel about a girl in 16th century England who is sentenced to be a sin eater and finds herself caught up in a deadly plot at the heart of the queen's court. And sin eaters in this like fantasy historical world are people who commit crimes and their fate is to hear the final con confessions of dying people, eat ritual foods symbolizing their sins as a funeral rite, and thereby shoulder their transgressions to grant their souls access to heaven. And I think that that's an incredibly intriguing plot. I just really, really, really hope that the writing pulls through on this because that plot sounds really interesting and very good for I think the month of September early fall getting into some historical fiction some little fantasy I'm very excited for this one so fingers crossed the writing holds up so there is that okay prompt number four. Ooh, we have another letter letter n as in nancy okay what do we have for n I don't have any ends. I have, it goes to M and then O. I really don't have any ends? That is very strange. I find that very odd. Okay, well, I guess we'll pull again. Okay, we have the letter V. Ooh, okay, I know what I'm gonna pick. So I have two books that begin with V. We have The Vegas Dilemma by V. Ki Now. And then we also have Visitation by Jenny Erpenbeck. I'm gonna pick Visitation because this takes place on an estate in Germany and it is translated from German by Susan Bernofsky. And it's supposed to be like this very odd literary fiction that tells the history of every person who's lived in this estate in Germany and the history and all the characters. It's very short, but it sounds so up my alley for like a dark, spooky, maybe rainy fall night. I'm gonna add visitation. I'm really excited for this one. And we love a translated fiction as well. Like that is definitely one of my favorites. How is it that I have two books that begin with V but none with N? Anyway, moving on. Prompt number five, we have very broad literary fiction. We have a very broad prompt, lit, thick. Wow, I have so many that I would like to read, but in case it's not shown up again, I am choosing a book that I got in Chicago, technically Evanston, but I will link that vlog down below. That was such a wonderful trip with so many wonderful bookstores. 
I really want to read The Temple House Vanishing by Rachel Donahue. So the front reads, atmospheric, creepy, tense, and utterly absorbing. So this takes place in a boarding school full of girls. I love the atmosphere already. And it's in a mansion. So it follows our character Louisa. She becomes friends with Victoria. They're both outsiders and outcasts. But their friendship is soon unsettled by a young art teacher, Mr. Lavelle, whose charismatic presence ignites tension and obsession in the cloistered world of the school. Then one day, Louisa and Mr. Lavelle vanish without a trace never to be found. Now, on the 25th anniversary of the disappearance, one journalist, a woman who grew up on the same street as Louisa, delves into the past determined to uncover the truth. She finds stories of jealousy and revenge, power and class, but might she find Louisa and Mr. Lavelle too? Told in alternating points of view, the Temple House Vanishing is tense, atmospheric, and page-turning with a shocking, ingenious conclusion. Thriller, haunting, mansions. Um, it's also an Irish bestseller and finalist for the Irish Book Awards Newcomer of the Year, so I believe it takes place in Ireland. Also, with this light hitting this cover, it does have a little holographic sheen, which I think is stunning, but up close, that is what we're looking at. So I found this book used. I'm very excited. I'm adding this. Oh my gosh, I love this like very female protagonist, a lot of female authors, dark academia, moody vibe we have going on right now. This is nice. I feel really inspired to read these books and that makes me happy. That is the point of these videos is to feel geeked out and inspired by the books I already own. Prompt number six, my friends. Ooh, book set near water. Okay. I don't necessarily want to read an oceany book um, unless it's like a spooky ocean book, like a like a cliffside mansion, dark moody cabin. I want that, not summer beach girl vibes. My first thought was actually Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham, just because this cover definitely has water on it. I think this would be so cute and fun to read and it's just about animals and I've never read it and I definitely believe they live near like a river or a lake or something just because it is featured on the cover and there's a little character <laughs> in a rowboat. So this is definitely an option. Um, what else? Ooh, 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 my friends, my friends. The Waves by Virginia Woolf. I have this stunning used copy. It is so beautiful. I do not know what this book is about at all. The plot on the back is not there. I don't know what it's about, but it's Virginia Woolf. I think this would be awesome. Oh yeah, okay, first page reads, the sea was indistinguishable from the sky, except that the sea was slightly creased as if a cloth had wrinkles in it. Beautiful. As they neared the shore, each bar rose, heaped itself, broke, and swept a thin veil of white water across the sand. I'm gonna add the waves. It sounds haunting, eerie. Virginia Woolf has such a wonderful way with like prose and it's stunning and odd and cryptic it feels like, but if it takes place near an ocean, I feel like this is gonna be amazing. There's nothing about this on the back at all. It's just a lot of, um, it is impossible to describe. Impossible to do more than salute the richness, the strangeness, the poetic illumination of this book. So sounds, sounds great to me. So we're actually gonna do The Waves by Virginia Woolf. I have not read a Virginia Woolf in a, in a while. <laughs> I don't know how long it's been. It's been many years. <laughs> okay, prompt number seven, my friends. What an awesome stack. <laughs> Ooh, translated book. Okay, I have quite a number of translated books. So let's just take a peek. I feel like I've been focusing a lot on these like lower shelves. Let's try to find something from the second shelf up now. Ooh, yes, okay, I know. I would love to read After Dark by Haruki Murakami, which is translated into English by Jay Rubin. This would be my third Haruki Murakami book. And this one takes place during the witching hours in Tokyo between midnight and dawn. And it centers around two sisters and it follows a lot of different things going on, which I love. I, I feel like this book specifically would be great in September to kind of break up this like very dense female literary fiction. And this will be a little bit more of like that surrealism, that abstract, but also fun and funky. There's something about Haruki Murakami's writing style that is just so 
delicious to me. It's easy to read. I can picture it so well in my head. It's like so sensory. It's just a lot of fun. And this is definitely a slimmer novel as well. So I'm definitely gonna be adding this for September. I think it would be so fun to read. Prompt number eight, my friends. We have the letter L. I only have four L books and I know what I'm gonna pick from those four. And that is Last Day by Dominika Ruta. This sounds so intriguing. It's like a science fiction dystopian. It is an alternate world or history or universe where the end of the world comes once a year. So every May 28th, humanity gathers to anticipate the planet's demise and celebrate as if the day is truly its last. On this holiday, three intersecting sets of characters embark on a possibly last chance quest for redemption. And then it goes and talks about all the three different characters. One is looking for love, one is looking for her long lost adoptive brother, and then it also follows a billionaire Japanese space tourist. So it's all about reflection on our deepest dreams, desires, hopes, and fears. And it's a debut novel, which like, what? This feels like in the same vein to me as Sin Eater where the plot is so out there. It's so grandiose and interesting. And I'm like, shut the front door. Like, I wanna read this, it sounds amazing. But the writing has to be A+, plus, 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 plus. It's gotta be 100%, otherwise it's going to fall really flat for me. So I'm gonna add last day. I'm really excited for this one. Okay, last two prompts, my friends. Prompt number nine, we have <laughs> the letter W. We just chatted about quite a few W books. So I think that means it's perfect to read The Wind in the Willows. Otherwise, I also have Watership Down by Richard Adams, Why Sargasso Sea by Jean Rees, Wizard of Oz, Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte, which I absolutely still would love to read. And if this TBR pile wasn't so dense already, I think I would choose uh, Wonderful Stroke of Luck by Anne Beattie. I really want to read this. This is also academia, a little bit darker, psychological, coming of age. Um, but I think the whimsy is needed in this pile. I think we need some cozy, cute whimsiness, including like talking animals. In animal communities, we need cute, tiny deliciousness. And this copy is just very interesting. This font size is just so tiny. Um, and this format is very strange, but my parents gifted it to me for Christmas and I love it because it's so funky. We're gonna add The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. And the last prompt, my friends, for September, like what is gonna be added to this like deliciousness? Are you kidding me? It's such a delicious stack. I don't even know where I'm gonna wanna start. I think that's gonna be the hard part. We have the letter Q. I don't think I have any Qs. Nope. <laughs> I didn't think so. <laughs> okay. Wow. Okay, we're down to like the last five prompts, which means next video we will be emptying this one and starting all over, recycling all the prompts again. Ooh, okay, we have yellow cover. I do indeed have Interview with a Vampire by Anne Rice, which is this gorgeous 1970s vibrant yellow color. It's a stunning, stunning edition. Ooh. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna do this one. This one's a little different for me because I'm not a romance reader and I don't even know if I would enjoy this book, but I just found it, I think yesterday, two days ago in a little free library. And that is Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell. Whoever had this book before really loved it. There's water damage. It is so crinkled and a little destroyed, but we love her. I read one <laughs> Rainbow Rowell book before. It was like the landline, whichever one it is that has the phone on it. And it was comical to me in a not good way. It was just so hokey and over the top romance. And it was just like, it was just so cheesy, but also I'm trying to give myself a chance to step out of a comfort zone. And for me, that's reading books that I normally wouldn't pick up, reading more romances, getting lost in like just mushiness. Like I want to feel mushiness. I want to feel sappy romance and smut and love and like I want to feel attached to that. So this novel, Eleanor is a new girl in town and with her chaotic family life, her mismatched clothes and unruly red hair, she couldn't stick out more if she tried. Park is the boy at the back of the bus. Black t-shirts, headphones, head in a book. He thinks he's made himself invisible, but not to Eleanor. Slowly, steadily, through late night conversations and an ever-growing stack of mixtapes, Eleanor and Park fall for each other. They fall in love the way you do the first time when you're young and you feel as if you have nothing and everything to lose. Oh, it does say not suitable for younger readers. So I do think we might be having some smut here, some high school smut, some uh, 
sexuality, coming of age. Um, yeah, I'm gonna add this because this is like a super vibrant yellow and also just a little bit more like light, summery, airy stuff that I normally would read in like June or July. So there we have it, my beautiful friends. That is my September TBR pile. I am so excited. This is a great stack and I don't know what book I'm gonna start with, but I'm so excited. So definitely stay tuned for some vlogs coming up soon so you can see what books I end up reading first. I definitely feel like this is a stack that I will actually be reading from, like directly from this stack. And I think that's because I'm definitely way more of like a fall winter gal, especially with reading. I read more books that I enjoy in those times of year for some reason. I think it's just like the cozy element. I love literary fiction, something a little bit more dense, something a little bit more meaty. But in the summer, I don't want to read meaty stuff. I want to just read light fluffy, but those never become five star reads. So if you made it to the end of this video, please comment some dark academia emojis. We can do old school buildings, black hearts, some crispy fall leaves, anything gothic, dark academia, the little like hourglass, whatever you can think of. Let's do some dark academia stuff. Also feel free to let us know what books you're planning on reading in the month of September. I would love to hear. And if you've read any of these books, no spoilers, but I would love to hear your thoughts. But thank you all so incredibly much for being here, my friends. I hope you enjoyed this video and I can't wait to see you all again very soon for my next one. Stay cozy, my friends. Bye!